At first glance, this table looks great. It's clean, organized, exactly how most companies and individuals love to present their data. And I get it. These merged cells make everything look tidy. But if we filter this table to only show the four HR department's items, oops, it only displays one item, which is clearly wrong. In this video, I'm going to show you how to structure your spreadsheets so you can still use all the built-in tools like filters, sorting, and pivot tables the way they were designed and maintain this clean layout that's easy to read. No merging, no breaking, just formatting that actually works. As usual, you can download the practice file from the video description. Filtering isn't the only thing that goes wrong when you have merged cells. Try building a pivot table to summarize this data. Excel ends up with a load of items assigned to blank departments and expense types because only one row has the department or expense type label. The rest gets assigned to blank. And sorting your table is a complete non-starter. If we try and sort the amounts, we get an error because all the merged cells need to be the same size. And don't even bother trying to write formulas that reference merged cells because you'll end up tearing your hair out in frustration. As you can see, merged cells are not functional. They break the very things that make Excel powerful, sorting, filtering, analyzing and summarizing your data. So let's fix that. First, let's clean up the structure. We'll start by removing the merged cells in the department and expense type columns. To select the cells on the home tab, click merge and center, and now they're back to normal. Next, we need to fill the empty cells with the department and the expense type. And here's a trick most people don't know. Instead of copying down the labels manually one by one, just select all the cells, including those that have labels, Control G to open the go to dialog box, special, choose blanks, click OK. Now that our blank cells are selected, type equals, up arrow, and here instead of pressing enter to complete the formula, press control enter. This tells Excel to apply the same formula to all selected blanks, filling each one with the value directly above it. Now at this point, the empty cells are filled, but they still contain formulas. So selecting them all again, control C to copy, and we're just going to paste them as values with the keyboard shortcut, control shift V. If you don't have that keyboard shortcut, go to paste and paste values. And now every cell is filled with clean static data. And while we're here, let's make this data set even smarter. With any one cell selected or select the whole table, control T, we're going to format it as an Excel table. It's detected, my table has headers. I'll click OK. The tables come with automatic formatting, but we can tone it down from the gallery here. I'm just going to go with this white table style, light 15. And I'm going to turn off the banded rows. That just gives me a cleaner slate to start with. Tables in general just make your data a lot easier to manage and analyze, so I encourage you to use them. Now, while the table will be easier to work with, it's visually overwhelming with repeating department and expense types, making the data harder to scan. And we can remedy that by hiding repeated values using conditional formatting. So selecting the department and expense type columns, excluding the headings. On the home tab, we're going to conditional formatting, new rule. Here, I want to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And here, I'm going to check whether this cell, the department name, is the same as or equal to the department name in the row above. Now, obviously here it's not going to match because we're referencing the heading, but the key is to make sure that the references in this formula are relative. So with them selected, I'm just going to press F4, one, two, three times. And now this formula is going to check the department and expense types in the current row are the same as the ones in the row above for every cell in the range selected. If they are, we're going to go into the formatting and make them visually disappear. So on the number tab, custom, here I'm going to use three semicolons. And as I enter the third one, the example here disappears. So you can see it's going to hide the data, but the value is still there in the background and fully functional for filters, pivot tables and formulas, etc. By the way, another option is to format the font for the cell white or to match the color of your cell fill. But this can become messy if you have different colors across your table. So I just find the semicolon method is cleaner. Let's also go to the border tab and we're going to remove the top border. That way the cells won't just look blank, they'll look blended together. 
like they were actually merged. We'll click OK and OK. And now only the first row of each department group is visible and the rest are hidden, making the table much easier to read. And to make it look even better, let's go to the View tab and turn off grid lines. Now there's just one more issue we need to fix before we move on. Right now, our repeated values are hidden with conditional formatting, but that logic doesn't recognize if a row is filtered out or not. For example, if we filter the status column to only show pending, you can see we've now lost the department names and some of the expense types. And it only displays the department and expense types where the visible row happens to also be the first row of each group, which is not what we need. What we need is a way to identify if the row above is visible or not. And we can do that with the aggregate function. So I'm just going to clear the filter and we'll just write it here beside the table so you can see how it works. Equals aggregate. Aggregate function lets you choose what type of function you want to apply. I want to count text that's visible, so I'm going to use three for count A. The options argument allows me to ignore hidden rows, which is number five. This way it will only count the row if it's visible. And then I want to check if the cell above the current row is visible. So in this case, that'll be cell A3, because I'm currently on row four, close parentheses on aggregate. So it counts it, it can see it, we'll copy it down, it returns one for every row because they're all currently visible. But let's see what happens if I filter again to show pending. Now you can see it knows that row five above is hidden, so it returns zero. It can't count it because it's hidden. And that zero will allow us to not apply the conditional formatting for this row. So again, let's clear the filter here and I'll copy this formula and we'll go in and we'll modify our conditional formatting. So down to Manage Rules and double click to open the rule. And in here, I need to use AND to allow me to not only check whether the value in the current row is the same as the row above, but also with aggregate, check whether that row above is visible. So both of these conditions must be true for the format to be applied. Click OK and OK. Nothing appears to have changed, but now if I filter, to only show pending and see the department and expense type labels correctly display. I'd love to give a shout out to Yuichi Chiba from Japan for this clever merge cell alternative idea, which I modified slightly to bring up to date. Now there's one more thing to keep in mind. If you insert or delete rows, Excel will fragment your conditional formatting rules in the background, making a mess of them. And this is because your formula refers to the row above or below. It's a known feature. Now there's a solution to this using the offset function, but it's a bit more advanced. If you'd like to see how that works, just let me know in the comments, or if this video hits 3000 likes, I'll make a follow up that walks you through it step by step. So if you want that, click the like button. If you liked everything we've done so far, you'll want to check out my Excel expert course. It covers layouts, analysis, pivot tables, formulas, basically all the essential skills to master Excel effectively. The link's in the video description if you're interested. Now that our spreadsheet is cleaned up, let's take a quick look at why all this effort was worth it. With just a few clicks, we can insert a pivot table. I'll pop it on the sheet beside so we can see it in context. We'll look at the department in the rows and add the amount to the values. Let's also look at the expense type in the rows. Instantly, you've got a clean breakdown of how much each department is spending. If you want to see how much is still unpaid, put the status in the filters and then filter for pending. And now you've got total pending expenses by department. This level of analysis only works when your data is structured correctly. No merged cells, no blanks, just a properly structured foundation that works. Pivot tables are truly powerful. They can break down massive data sets in seconds let you drill into details and give you insights you'd miss with regular formulas. And if you want to take it even further, like adding interactive timelines, calculated fields, or custom grouping, I've got a video that walks you through those exact tricks, which you'll find right here on the screen. I'll see you there.